Hey everybody, Professor Benelou with the second of two short videos describing Unit 4 Discussion Board and making sure you understand what's expected of you. Okay, so in this short video I'm going to discuss the four topics that you can choose from. Again, as I've said earlier, all are very interesting, all have incredible amounts of research information out there on them. So just dive into the one you feel is the most interesting. So this is the Reaganomics topic. Reagan was sworn into office in January of 1981, and he was determined to increase the amount of spending money every American had in his or her pocket. So in an attempt to do this, he instituted what was dubbed as Reaganomics. The press dubbed it Reaganomics, and it stuck. Reagan put into place tax cuts for the wealthy, and he felt that if he cut the taxes for the wealthy, the wealth will trickle down. Reagan was a huge proponent of smaller government, and he felt that the middle class would benefit from simplified tax codes. He cut about $41 billion from the federal budget, which is a lot, and much of that, unfortunately, had been set aside for social programs. Supply-side economics is another important part of Reaganomics. Supply-side economics is the belief that cutting taxes for the big businesses will benefit business and benefit the middle class. Tax Equity and Responsibility Act, the the primary document that you're going to read is an interview with Reagan about the Tax Equity and Responsibility Act. This was passed in 1982, early on in Reagan's presidency, and it closed tax loopholes and restricted pension benefit plans. Basically, what this was meant to do was raise money to pay off the government's debt without having to raise taxes. It helped out somewhat, but not as much as expected. The gap between the rich and the poor continued to grow during Reagan's years in office. Really, to truly judge the success of Reaganomics, you have to look at how the lower middle classes fared during Reaganomics. Reagan did not increase the minimum wage during his presidency, and federal funding for things like firefighters, policemen, and education were all... Okay, so that is basically the Reaganomics topic. Single mothers in African-American households saw the biggest decline in income during Reaganomics, and in 1984, Reagan further slashed the tax rates for the wealthy, causing an even larger deficit. So that's what you need to know for diving into Reaganomics. Okay, the first Gulf War. The background to the Gulf War. First of all, August 2nd, 1990, Iraqi forces invaded and took over Kuwait. Kuwait, we know, is a very oil-rich nation. President George H.W. Bush was president at the time. He had served as President Reagan's vice president for eight years, and he had a lot of experience in the diplomatic realm. Um, he demanded the withdrawal of Iraqi forces. Saudi Arabia, the, you got to understand that we as the United States were the head of United Nations coalition forces during the first Gulf War, and our base of operations was the nation of Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia agreed to let their nation be the base for the operation because Saudi Arabia is also a very oil-rich nation. And the Saudis were afraid that, well, if the Iraqis were invading and take over Kuwait, that they'd be next. Okay. Since the U.S. had previously been an ally of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, the dictator of Iraq, dared to invade and take over Kuwait. He did not feel the United States would militarily intervene. He greatly miscalculated the United States. So coalition forces quickly liberated Kuwait and headed into Iraq. Even though the coalition forces had won the war, Saddam Hussein remained in power. He would remain in power until 2003. President George H.W. Bush gave the speech in front of the United Nations General Assembly October 1st, 1990, a mere two months after the um, takeover of Kuwait by the Iraqis. Bush, in the speech, condemned the Iraqi aggression and called on members of the United Nations to demand a return of Kuwait to the Kuwaitis. He stated that the United Nations could aid nations to band together and prevent aggression and punish those responsible. Rise of conservatism is your third topic, third out of the three topics. Pat Buchanan gave an important speech in front of the Republican National Convention. It's basically the culture war speech. We're going to get into that. Pat Buchanan had run for the Republican nomination, but lost to President George H.W. Bush, who was running for re-election in 1992. August 17, 1992, Buchanan was chosen to give an important speech in front of the Republican National Convention in support of the re-election campaign of President George H.W. Bush. In this speech, he famously talks about a culture war. What is the culture war that he's talking about? 
And what are the topics of debate that he's talking about between liberals and conservatives in 1992? Are they the same topics that liberals and conservatives are debating in the year 2020? Talk about that. He then states how George H.W. Bush is the right man to lead the nation through its current difficulties. Okay, and then the last, the fourth but last topic is called the tear down the wall speech, last but not least. Reagan gave this important speech, this famous speech, in front of the Berlin Wall in June of 1987. During this speech, he urged an end to the Cold War, and he dreamed of democracy spreading to those nations that were formerly under communist rule. This is the end of the Cold War topic. And he emphasized the hardship that were endured by Berliners and East Germans since the wall had been built in 1961. Okay, so those are the four topics that you can choose from. Um, the dismantling of the wall actually occurred in November 1989, which was two years after Reagan had given his speech. And this occurred after the collapse of the East German government. The economy in East Germany had been on decline, and Soviet Premier um, Gorbachev had actually urged the East Germans to put some economic reforms in place, like he had done in the Soviet Union. Many East Germans were flocking to embassies requesting to be led into West Germany. In November 1989, East German leader Erich Honecker resigned and East and West Germany were reunited. Okay, so these are the four topics that you can choose from yet again. Um, really dive into these and let me know if you have absolutely any questions. You know you can reach me at any time through email or CTU Messenger message. And of course, Mondays during my office hours, I am available. So get going on this assignment and let me know. Have a good one, everybody.